You got that, did you, in that passage? Jesus is telling us that we should learn how to be dishonest. Is that what it was? Isn't that what it was about? That learn how to be dishonest with wealth and then you can be dis... Boy, that's a tough one. That's a really tough passage, isn't it? Well, and like many of the passages, many of the parables of Jesus, he told things the way it was um, in this world so that we could learn something spiritual for it, from it. So this um, man, uh, the dishonest manager, had somehow cheated his master. And then his master decided to dismiss him. And uh, then the man went and got all the creditors of the master and said, mark your bills down. All the ones who, all the debtors, the ones who owe the master money, lower what you owe, make it less. So that they would like him after he was fired. Now this is why in current day, when somebody gets fired, security walks them to the door. They don't get to go back to their computer and make any quick changes or take stuff out of the drawer or raid the supply cabinet on the way out of the building. That's it. You're gone. And if current day employers didn't know that instinctively, they could get that from the Bible. It's right there in Luke chapter 16. Um, we'll tell you how to do that. So, uh, what is Jesus trying to say to us by this? Well, Jesus is saying you should take the wealth of this world and spend it wisely so that you will get into heaven later. When I was a child, um, I used to sit right there somewhere in the junior choir. And uh, sometimes on that side, I don't remember why I was on which side or the other, but I think it was on that side to start with. And uh, over here, on the wall of the transept. Now, St. James is really where I grew up as a big church. It would seat 300 or 400, I guess. So the transepts were significant. The transepts would seat this many people easily. And there was a plaque on the wall with letters. Must have been that high. It was a four-letter word. Well, a nice one. <laughs> Someone's name. Hale. H-A-L-E. In brass. A great big grass tile that must have been six feet wide or something, two feet high, H-A-L-E. So there was no question about who they were. Now I don't know who put the thing there. I guess somebody in the family put it there, and I suppose they did it for a very devout and holy reason. But there have been times in the history of the church where people have done things, um, given money to the church because they were pretty sure that by doing that, when they went to heaven and God opened up the big book and said, let me see now, how much did you give to Christ Church Bob Cage? Let me just check that. Oh, I don't know. Well, let's we'll see. So there was this clear thought that what we gave to the church and what we gave to others is what God sent to the kingdom of heaven. During the Reformation, there was a little jingle that the churches used to sing, and it was quite effective. It was, whenever a coin in the coffer rings, a soul from purgatory springs. <laughs> See if that makes a difference. That's better. I think. I cut back some feedback there. So, whenever a coin in the coffer rings, a soul from purgatory springs. And um, it was that thinking of the church to try and get people to give money in order to assure themselves of some kind of afterlife spiritual benefit that prompted Martin Luther to think about the scriptures once again, and that's what got the Reformation going. And he realized that the, um, we're saved by grace, not by works. And he was looking at the Apostle Paul, reading his words, We are saved by grace, not by words, lest anyone should boast. And so we get into the kingdom of heaven not by what we give or do, but by what we believe. So then how do we come back to that scripture? 
Well, what about what Jesus said in uh, Matthew 25? That's a very well-known passage. That's where um, Jesus tells the story at the end of all things when um, everyone is gathered before the great king and the sheep are on the king's right and the goats are on the left. Sorry about that. But that's what it says. The goats are on the left, the sheep are on the right. And to those on the right hand, God says, enter into rest. You who are blessed of my father, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. I was sick and you visited me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was in prison and you came to me. And they said, Lord, when did we ever do that to you? And Jesus said, even as you've done it to the least of one of these, my brothers or sisters, you've done it to me. And then to those on the left, okay, my apologies, but you sat there. <laughs> to those on the left, the king said, Depart from me, you wicked, for I was hungry and you gave me nothing to drink. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was sick and in prison and you did not visit me. And they said, Lord, what, what, when did that ever happen? And the king said to them, well, Even as you did not do it to the least of these, you did not do it to me. So there it is. Jesus is talking about the last judgment, and it's what we do that decides on how we get into the kingdom of heaven. And Paul said, it's what we believe. This is getting difficult, right? Which is it? Well, I always think you should read all the scriptures because it all comes together in the end. How would one act if one believed? James says, if you don't, uh, how can you say you are saved and yet you have no works? Um, because your works are, they demonstrate how you're saved. That's not an exact quote by any stretch. Um, We were at a restaurant the other day, Shirley and I in Toronto, and uh, we wanted to find out, we were looking for a place to eat, for later on. We saw this lovely looking Indian restaurant, but we thought we should go inside to see whether or not the meal um, showed us lactose intolerance, so was there food that she could eat in there? And we told the, the man who was running the restaurant the issue, and he said, oh, come on in, come on in, and he showed us every dish, and told us which dishes were lactose free, which were safe, and which ones weren't. Of course, you can't have a buttery chicken. I think it looks good, um, because I'm not lactose intolerant. Anyway, so uh, he was very kind to show us all around. Now, we were about to leave. We said, depending on where we were, we might be back. Um, and he said, would you like a glass of water before you go? It's a hot day. And and we said, it's fine, we've got water in our car, we're okay. And he said, well, in India, he was obviously from India, in India, you always offer water to another person because they're a human. Because they are another human, like we are. And it doesn't matter whether they're going to buy anything, there's no cost for it, it's just that's the right thing to do, to share water with another human. So we came back for dinner, he was so nice, and... Uh, uh, it was delicious. All of it was delicious. I think I ate all of it. Anyway, um, and uh, afterwards, we were chatting and we told him our Syrian family is coming on Monday, and which is tomorrow now. And uh, so we started talking about the refugee crisis in the world and the coming of Syrians and so on. And he talked about our responsibility to care for all these people because they are humans. We are all humans. We need to all care for one another because we're all humans. And then he started talking about how we need to look for solutions, not just to the refugee crisis, but to the crisis that causes refugees. And uh, went on a great length about that. I think he was Hindu. Um, and he really cared about other people. Because we're humans. We're brothers and sisters. We're all the same thing. And that was really important to him. So I think, looking at that scripture where Jesus is talking about uh, spending what we have in this world, looking to the future, is it 
that we're doing this because we want to get into the kingdom of heaven, or we do this because we are going to get into the kingdom of heaven. Is it God's work in us that so changes me that I want to help someone else? Or do I help someone else so that God will work God's change in me? And I don't think it's ever uh, able to be decided so simply that this comes first before that comes, because I think it's all a progression. I think when we reach out and help someone else, we find such a blessing in that. Remember Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. We often say that at the offertory, just so you know. It's more blessed to give than to receive. But the reality is that when you have an opportunity to help someone else, it does feel good, doesn't it? And I've heard some, in fact, I think I've heard myself say that you should not give until it hurts, but give until it feels good. It's always good to help someone else, to make a change in your own life when you reach out and touch someone else. And then, of course, that changes who I am. When I help someone else, it changes me. And I begin to realize that this is fun. This feels good. Let me do that again. Oh, that feels even better. And the more we reach out and touch someone else, the more we feel good about it. So the parable that Jesus told here said, look, even the wicked of this world have this figured out. That if you want to look to your future, spend something now, do something now, so that the future will be better for you. So this unjust steward went and knocked everybody's bills down so that they would like him when he was unemployed and maybe they'd let him couch surf or something and spend a little time with him. Even those people know it. So how much more should the children of light understand that your future is dependent upon who you are today? And are you the kind of person today that wants to give and bless and help and nourish and heal other people? And if you are, you will find that the transformation takes place within you. And you'll find that you're the kind of person that can't do anything but help others. Can't do anything but love others and be gracious to others. In the passage we heard today from, see I don't even have my Bible, I'm really out of sorts today. But anyway, our passage which we had from Paul's letter to Timothy. Um, where he talked about that we should pray at all times for all people. Even for kings and governors, those people who most are afraid of, everybody has a word or two to say about politicians. Pray for even those people. Pray for them all. And when our hearts are so expansive that we want to pray for everybody, we want to help everybody, then we are fit people for the kingdom of God. So maybe it is true whenever appointed the coffer rings the souls from Purgatory Springs, maybe it is true that the more we give to the church, the more blessed we are, but the reality is, the more we give to everything, the more blessed we are. The more we try to fix the ills and evils and problems of this world, the more we are fixed within, the more changes take place in us, and the more we are able to be made into the image of Christ. Remember that lovely passage, Philippians chapter 2, have this mind in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God something to be grasped, but emptied himself, took upon himself the form of a servant, and being made into the form of a servant, submitted himself to the cross, and that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue confess. That passage calls us to have the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ is one of giving and loving and serving and offering ourselves to others. And in that we find our salvation. And understand it. It's our salvation not because God's going to reward us for doing good. But in giving and loving we are transformed and we are who we need to be. We become the people of Christ. We become church. We become the people that celebrate and worship and love. And that's when we become shining examples. That's when we become who God wants us to be.